Welcome to the seventh video in MobyDux tutorial series – how to deploy a centralized cryptocurrency trading platform using open source software. In this video, I will show you how to deploy all of the components, seed admin accounts and configure wallets for currencies. Let's get right into it. Alright guys, so we've came a long way actually and this is our main video where we are going to deploy all of the components and see them working together. So that's pretty exciting. I hope you are excited as well. So let's get to the bottom of it. Uh, now, before we uh, start doing the preparation for deployment, there is a little change I want you to do to your infrastructure to make it um, more stable uh, that I didn't mention in the previous videos. So what it is, is that you have to <coughs> allocate an Elastic IP to your manager Docker Swarm node. Uh, that is done uh, in order for your public IP of Docker Manager uh, to stay uh, the same uh, regardless of whether you restart a virtual machine uh, or not. Maybe you want to change the instant type or stuff like that. If you don't have this Elastic IP enabled, uh, that will actually change uh, your public IP and you will have to always change your DNS record. And that is no good uh, because changing DNS record, it takes time to propagate and that that's when we have some uh, downtime uh, of our platform. So in order to avoid having that, what you need to do is you need to allocate an Elastic IP address <clears throat> so there is two stages. First, you allocate an Elastic IP address and it will be available right here. And then what you do is you associate that Elastic IP address with your virtual machine. So that virtual machine would be your Docker Swarm manager. Make sure you do this step. It's uh, really quite important. Now, uh, going back to our current video, uh, there are a couple of things we need to do before we can actually start deploying. First of all, we have to build our front-end container. Remember, in the video number two, we actually changed base up a logo and colors. And now we need to build a Docker container of that base up uh, that we worked with. Uh, and uh, we will use this container uh, when we will be deploying all of the applications. The second thing we have to do is we have to seed admin accounts. So we have to um, actually, I'll show you how it's done. You can pre-seed some admin accounts uh, so that they will be in the database after you deploy it straight away. And the third thing we have to do is we have to configure our vault, our vault KMS. So remember I in the video number three, I think, uh, I showed you how to provision vault KMS and we will have to uh, do some configuration uh, for that one uh, to work as well. Uh, so that's three things and straight after that we can start deploying. So in order to build our base up container, what do we have to do? <clears throat> you go to your project on our GitLab where you uh, forked base up, you go to packages and registries and then you can go to container registry and this is actually a very neat feature of GitLab itself that it has a container registry so you don't need to use Docker Hub or any other um, available resources, you can just have everything on GitLab. And I think personally to me that is very good. And now they also have some hints of how you can build your container. So you need to copy that. Then you open your base up in VS Code for example and you actually run the docker build process. So I already did that and make sure you have uh, this environment variable uh, before uh, your docker, docker build. Um, that is needed uh, because it actually in docker file it checks uh, which version it is so just make sure you have it and so I already uh, run this command so I already have an image I'm gonna push it to this GitLab so we will see actually uh, how it's done and that we will see that this image will be right on the GitLab when I push it so let's do that All right, and now let's check it out. Yep, so as you can see, uh, we have our GitLab, uh, our image right here. Uh, so that is great. It's actually will be accessible from now on. 
And next thing we have to do is we have to make sure we are going to be using this exact image on our deployment. So once again, let's copy the image URL. Uh, then we have to SSH to our manager machine. I already did that, so I'm just going to go right here. Uh, then I go to config app UML and we go up and go up to images, to storage, right. We go up to images and where we see the front end, we actually change uh, our base app, change it to have um, to use base app. Now, and alternatively, what we could have done is we could have opened uh, locally uh, our deployment files. So let's do it the alternative way. I want to CD to work, uh, videos, open DAX, prod. And I'll open this in VS Code. Now I go to config, app UML, and I hope you remember that when we set up our CI CD process, that once we do any changes to these deployment files, they will be actually propagated uh, also on our virtual machines. So let's change here. Cool. Uh, so we have this. Now, uh, our second step is what I mentioned, is now we're going to actually seed um, some admin accounts. Uh, so let's go to config, barong, seedsyml, and you can see uh, some admin accounts here available. Now just make sure that in your deployment you change those so you can specify as many accounts as you want and make sure to generate some secure passwords uh, and you know specify emails that you have possession of so that you can always uh, use them. Now I will do this later on. Uh, but I just show you how where you configure all this stuff. All right, so that's cool. Now the next thing we have to do is we have to also specify configuration for our vault. So let's do that. And um, for that we need to go to templates, compose, and then we go to uh, backend. And here you see that we have our vault. Now let's open this up. So you can see there is some configuration for Vault, like so, uh, for MySQL, for example, for backend. Uh, but we want to actually uh, specify our KMS configuration. So let's do that. Let's go Vault KMS, and we we need this link. This shows uh, how you actually specify that that config. So that's cool. Uh, now we also want S3. Actually, I want my gist. Yes, so right here. Okay, now um, in order for this to work, we have to specify this seal, uh, seal config that is usually configuration. You can see it's under configurations storage, uh, UI, right, so it's on, on the same place. <clears throat> and you can see right here, listener, so uh, that's actually on the same, same level, so to speak. So let's go right here and let's specify our config after listener right here. So after listener, we go and we say, oh, Sorry, no, this is not very um, okay. So we specify our seal config like so, and the only thing we we need here is we need our KMS KID, and I'll show you why. So let's specify that, and it should be again within this syntax. So let's do that, and our key ID. I'll copy from right here. I don't need this anymore. And let's specify key ID. All right. 
So that's our vault configuration. Now make sure that you do it in the right place. And the reason why we don't need this secret key and access key is because in our virtual machines, so I'll go to virtual machines now, to our instances, open, I'll open this instance. So if you look at the security of these instances, uh, we need to uh, give them IAM roles that we specified earlier when we were provisioning our KMS for Vault. So I'll show you right here. If you go to security, modify IAM role, and you give it the IAM role we created. So hit save, and this should be enough. This configuration should be enough uh, for our Vault uh, to run correctly. So let's modify IAM role again. Save. Cool. Now, that is enough uh, in order to start the deployment. Uh, so let's go ahead and commit uh, all of these changes. So to do that, we need to open the terminal. Let's see. OK, let's add this. and say vault configuration and base app image update. All right, perfect. Let's push this. OK, now this is pushed, it will be pulled on both of the machines and then we will start deployment. OK, so now in order for our world to be running and actually for our applications to also be deployed successfully, uh, what we have to do is we have to add a security group to both of our VM instances. And that security group is the one that is used for the database. So what we need to do is we can actually, I think, select both of these and then we can, no, we can do that for both of them. So we can just select one and then go to actions, security, change security groups. And you need your default security groups right here. So you add that and you go back to instances. You select second one, actions, security, change security groups and add that one as well. OK, so now both of the machines have it. So both of them should be available to access the database. And then the, our Vault instance should also work properly. So let's go back here. All right, so make sure that your backend component for Vault is like so, uh, that it specifies the MySQL link uh, along with the password as well as seal type, which is AWS KMS, and you have to provide your KMS key ID right here. So make sure this is done correctly, otherwise you might have some struggles. So for me, this is done uh, correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy Vault now once again, and then I will initialize it. So let's do that. Let's do, we have command right here. Yep. So this should deploy a world for us. Let's see. Yep. Now we need to execute into that container. So let's do that. Yep. So then we can do world status and we see that it's not initialized yet. So we have to change that. So that's world operate in it. All right. So this has initialized our vault and we have some initial root token as well as some recovery keys. Now this should be saved somewhere, somewhere safe. So I'll do that and then we come back to it. All right. Now that we have saved our unsealed keys and root token, next thing we have to do is we have to authenticate into our vault. So we do that by vault login and our root token. So that's great. Done that. 
And the next thing we have to do is we have to enable some secrets. So you can know you should open up a real blog and the latest article. And the next thing you do is you do world secrets enable transit. Then you enable TTP. Great. Uh, then you enable KV. And you need to put your KV in the end. All right, that's great. So we have set up our vault successfully. Uh, everything should be working as expected from now on. And now our next thing is we have to just follow this tutorial. And the next thing we have to do is in config app ML, uh, we put our vault root token. So let's do that. Okay, so I put the root token. Next thing we, is we have to render the config. Uh, for creating Ethereum wallets, we already did those steps, so we can skip them for now. We already kind of done all that. So we can start from this point, 25, and do everything from, from this point forwards. So let's do render config. Perfect. Then we start deploying. Yeah. Start deploying the main services. How exciting is that? I think it's pretty exciting. Uh, now we have a problem deploying GraphQL, but that's okay because for this tutorial we're not going to deploy any GraphQL and that image we do not have, we yet don't have accessible to the public. <clears throat> All right, so let's do the next thing. Next thing is we have to see the databases. Um, let's see, I think I might uh, probably running into the problem because we have GraphQL enabled. So let's actually disable it. All right, we can just get rid of GraphQL altogether, I think, because uh, we do not have yet that available to the public. So let's do this and deploy everything. Okay, good. Now we need to see the databases. So let's do just that. All right, and in order to do so, we have to do this two times, uh, one time for PCO and one time for Barong, so let's do that. So Docker PS. Uh, you can see we have App Logic running here. Let's see actually service LS. So pretty much everything is replicated apart from Influx DB. And our Barong and PCO, they are most likely running on the second machine. So let me SSH to that machine. Okay, you can see that we have our PCO and Barong right here. All right, so now in order to see the database, we have to copy this command. We have to copy this command, paste it here. And in here, we paste our container ID. So let me do it like so, and then check my container. So it's right here. And now I need to exec the container and execute the following command. So uh, yeah, and just another tip is that should be like so. Right, now this will run the migrations. I already kind of did that uh, for Barong. So let's do the same thing for PCO. And we will have to seed them as well. So we'll just do um, 
migration first and then we'll do the seed. So you can see we're creating and migrating the database for PCO now. Now let's also copy the seed command. All right, great. So we also want to do this one. I don't remember it's link underscore config. So let's do that. And then PC as well, we will do. So you can see that we seeded some users which is great. Those are the users that we've previously um, we previously worked with and I showed you how you can see them. All right, we have some problem with our seed files for PCO and I'll show you where those are located. So config PCO seed and now it says some max balance is a problem so max balance is right here and you can see I have some problem with a fee wallet on the Y but it doesn't actually have a max balance so let's change that yeah and the rest is good <clears throat> Once again, let's run the seed on PCO. And so it runs successfully now. So yeah, so now we've created and seeded our databases. Let's move forward. And moving forward is we have to seed the influx DB. So let's see what's up with our influx DB. And why it wouldn't spin up. Okay, so we have some problem with uh, mount points. I I guess we have to create a couple of directories for it. So let's see. Yep, we have this directory, but we don't have this one. So let's create a directory. Oh, that should be sufficient for our InfluxDB to spin up. Okay, so it looks like it's running now. You can see it on top. Let's see. Yeah, so InfluxDB is running now, which is great. Uh, now we also need to seed it as well. So let's do that. Um, yeah, I think I can do Docker PS. And I can see that my InfluxDB is on the other machine, possibly. So let's do Docker PS again. Yeah, you can see that my InfluxDB is on this machine. So let's run this command. Okay, so run successfully. We can move on to the next one. And the next one is to start the demons. Let's do that. Okay, looks like we're missing. <clears throat> okay, um, yeah, so um, looks like this one still uses the old file name. So let's quickly change that. This was an old component called Ranger and we will just populate another file for Rango and the configuration is pretty much the same for them. So 
shouldn't be a problem. And now let's spin up. So these are all daemons that, that are responsible for different functions uh, on the platform. For deposit collection, you can see both most, most of them are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, some of them you might want to dive deeper into. You, the source code for these daemons is open source. Uh, it's PCO repository. Uh, so you can always go back to that, go back there and um, study it for yourself. Now, we have our backend spin up, which is MySQL, Vault, Redis, RabbitMQ. We have our applications spin up, which is PCO and Barong and DeppLogic. And now we also have our daemons spin up that are responsible for most of the functions on the platform. Now, the last thing to do for us is to deploy our front end. And before we do that, we have to actually log into our registry so that we have, you know, the credentials to pull um, to pull our image. And in order to have that, we have to go to settings, access tokens, name uh, swarm pool, and read registry. That's all we need. We just want to read containers from there. We create a token. Swarm pool, so username swarm underscore pool, password, great. And here as well, swarm underscore pool, password, great. So this means that our front end is accessible now on both of the machines, which is perfect. Next thing we have left is to just deploy it. So let's copy this command, run it, and it's creating services. Let's see our services. How are they doing? So um, we have a couple of services that are not yet spinning up. Let's give them a bit more time. These ones are probably pulling the images. Yep, you can see the tower is already up, which is our admin panel. Let's see whether our front end is able to be pulled which it should be because it, we provided some credentials. So let's just make sure it does work. Okay, so we seem to have a problem with it saying that there is uh, no such image. Okay, let's just double check once again. We have our container registry. We have our base app. So let's just you know clone it and see whether we can pull it yep we can so let's do that manually um just to make sure that both of the machines have the latest image and let's see service ls all right, so we have our front end. It's replicated, which is great, great news. Uh, all right, guys, now let's actually see the results of our work. So I'm gonna go ahead and get um, and get our seated users so that I have something to log in with. And I'm gonna just get this user. And let's go to our website, try.bitside.eu. And as you can see, the platform is up. Let's try to log in. All right, so we have logged in successfully. You can see we can go through different menus here to our trade, onto our profile page. And we actually see our login history as well. So that is great. Um, so I'll leave you with that. Now that is the end of the seventh tutorial video. What can I say? Congratulations. Now you have a fully functional crypto trading platform that can be used by admins and end users, traders. 
But hang in there for a couple more videos and don't miss the final touches because in the next video we will liven up your charts and order book with hummingbot.io trading bot. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. We always read and appreciate your comments and make sure to answer your questions and apply useful suggestions. Before you go, join our Telegram community, link in the description. Have a great day everyone, see you next time.